So it's easy for me to tell you about the top five technology careers in demand, but I'm not only gonna tell you about those roles, I'm gonna explain to you why they will always be in demand. Here's why. Founders that create billion dollar tech companies start by writing code and talking to users. The people that write code are called software engineers and the highest profile people that talk to users are in sales. Small or large, successful tech companies will always be writing code and talking to users and they're usually supported by three other roles in design, data, and marketing. With that said, I'm gonna break down the top five technology careers in demand, starting with software engineering. Software engineers are builders. They create apps that you use every day, like Instagram, Facebook, even YouTube that you're watching right now. If you don't know what code is, code is instructions that you give to a computer for you to get it to do what you want. Why do engineers make so much money? It's because of supply and demand. Tech is no longer an industry anymore, and everybody's trying to hire you, but there's not enough people graduating from four-year universities. If you want to get a job in tech, one of the fastest ways to get in is by becoming a software engineer. If you want to know more detail about how much software engineers get paid in your neighborhood, watch my co-founder Archer Meister's video about how much software engineers make and his video about a day in the life as a junior software engineer so you can have more detail on that. The next role I'm going to talk about is my background in sales. Fun fact, the fastest path to the CEO seat is either in sales or software engineer. Usually if you want to start off a career in sales, you start off as an SDR, also known as a sales development representative. Usually you're promoted in less than a year, at most 18 months, and you graduate into the role of account executive, also known as AE. SDRs set up meetings for the AEs. AEs are the closers of the deals that make revenue for a company. There is no company that is large that does not have a sophisticated sales team in order to make revenue. SDRs and AEs make hundreds of thousands of dollars and sometimes millions of dollars per year. And if you want to learn more about how to get into these roles, make sure you check out boot camps like FlockJ or SV Academy so that you can get one of these jobs today. Also, if you want to hear a story of a woman that started working in retail that eventually became part of a billion dollar company working in every single sales role. Listen to Heather Swan on the Breaking the Stars podcast about how she went from working in retail to being a top closer at Zoom. I know I said I'm done talking about sales, but another couple of roles that tend to be in this area is customer success and customer support. Usually they're talking to people to understand what their problems are to make them feel better but also to help AEs and SDRs close more deals and set more appointments, but also provide feedback to software engineers so they can build products that people want and need. The next role we're gonna talk about is in design. Our people are very creative. We drive value through culture in every single software engineering product, but often we're not paid for it. So we gotta figure this out. Usually design roles are broken down into two different roles. UX and UI. UX stands for user experience. UI stands for user interface. It doesn't matter if you are a great builder that creates the most advanced technology in the world. If people don't know how to use it, it doesn't matter. So as a designer, you need to create a user interface that is easy to understand, but also an experience that feels good because people make decisions based off of how they feel in addition to how they think. If you want to hear more stories about dope designers, check out our podcast, The Breaking Starters Podcast, again, about the story featuring Jason Maiden, who used to be the global brand director for Jordan Brand at Nike, that eventually became 
uh, leader at Stanford in the design school and is currently running his own company called Superheroic. Or you can listen to the story of John Maeda, who was the head of global design at a company called Automatic. That's a pure remote workforce in case you're looking for remote work and it's really fire. The next role we're gonna talk about is data analysts and data scientists. Data analysts and data scientists make value out of data. They're usually in a supporting role, collecting data that comes from the engineering team, the sales team, the customer support team, cleaning it, making sure we have really beautiful reports so that people can make decisions. Not just executives, but people across the entire department about what they can do. So usually people that are in data science or data analyst roles are supporting people, but sometimes they're also in decision-making positions as well. So if you want to be in a data analyst or data scientist role, you gotta be really, really good at math and you gotta love cleaning a lot of data and making value out of it. It's a really popular role. It also makes several six figures and sometimes even more than that. And if you want to learn more about how to get these types of jobs, I want to give a huge shout out to uh, Thinkful, Flatiron, Lambda School, and a bunch of other job training programs in Career Karma that you all can check out today if you download the app. The next role we're going to talk about is marketing. Most people, when they think about marketing, they get images of Don Draper from Mad Men. They get images of their favorite Nike or Gatorade commercial which is super important when it comes to marketing. But marketing is actually very data-driven. Before telling you more about marketing, I need to tell you something that's very important to understand. Startups take off because founders make them take off. Yes, a handful of them grew on their own, but for the most part, they require a little push. The way that they get this push is by doing something called doing things that don't scale. And you can check out Paul Graham's blog post about this from Y Combinator. People say it all the time. This product is so good, it sells itself. But this is almost never true. The people that tell you that are lying to themselves. That might have worked back in the day, but today they don't work like that no more. If you build it, will they come? The answer is no. And if you don't believe me, learn more about it by going to class nine by Blake Masters around his notes about zero to one. Marketing has a very strong relationship with sales. When you start a tech company or you've been running a tech company for a long time, it's very important to understand where your people came from, right? These sources where people came from are called channels. The most powerful form of marketing is word of mouth. But people might have heard of your tech company or your product that you're working for through Facebook or Instagram or a podcast or a YouTube video like the one you're watching today. So as a marketer, it's important to understand data as well so you know which channels are performing the best. Those sources I was talking about are called channels and you are usually feeding these people to SDRs that are trying to filter out who's the most serious about using your product so that they can set up appointments for the account executives so that they can close the deals. I'm not gonna go into a bunch of detail about how that works, but just know that marketing is a funnel, it's very data-driven, and today, a lot of marketers actually have a software engineering or data science background because you need to be maniacal about the numbers. Here's another fun fact. 40 cents of every venture capital dollar raise goes to paying Google and Facebook for ads. That type of marketing is called SEM, a search engine marketing, and organic marketing is called SEO, search engine optimization. You can do your own research about both of those things, but if you wanna be really, really, really a savage, you probably wanna know more about SEO versus SEM. All these links that I talked about to get these skills are below, but you could also download the Career Karma app so you can learn 
how to be a savage at marketing too. So there you have it, the top five technology careers that are in demand. Software engineering, sales, data analysts or data scientists, designers, and marketers. I know it's hard to pick. You wanna know my personal opinion about the fastest way to break into tech? Here it is. The fastest way to break into tech is through software engineering or sales. Why? Because founders that build billion dollar tech companies start off and will always be writing code and talking to users to understand what people need so that they can make what people want. Honestly, you can't go wrong by picking any of these five careers in technology because technology is no longer an industry anymore. And if you want to talk to people directly that are currently pursuing these careers in job training programs, learning the skills to have these careers and also people that are working at your favorite companies doing these different types of roles, make sure you download the Career Karma app so you can be coached by someone else like you so you can take advantage of your career today. So what did you think about this video? Leave a comment, subscribe, tell your friends, and let's break in.